Just because something is old doesn't necessarily mean that it's toast. Coming up next, we'll take a look at a super special senior system. Tech Throwback starts now. Welcome to this edition of Tech Throwback, the program that brings you techno trends from way back when. I'm Bill Roberts, your host, and today we'll take a look at some old school video tools, including one tool that revolutionized the world of digital video production. But before we get to that, let's take a look at a helpful handheld educator, today's piece of handy tech. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Throwback Workshop. And today we're going to take a look at an interesting piece of tech from Texas Instruments. Actually, it was a, one of the first educational toys and one of the best selling educational toys in the late 70s and early 80s. And it's this, it's called the Little Professor. This might look like a calculator, but actually it isn't. What it is, it's electronic flashcards basically. What you do is you enter in here the uh, skill level you want and also the operation you want, whether it be addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And then it drills you with 10 questions and you have multiple skill levels too, so you can test your math skills from uh, basically from level one to level four. Let's take a look at The Little Professor on the Tech Throwback White Paper. The Little Professor was put out by Texas Instruments in 1976. At the time of release, the list price was under $20. Now the unit was called a reverse calculator, which meant the unit generated unsolved mathematical expressions and the user had to enter the answer. TI actually called it a handheld drill and practice aid. In 1977 alone, TI sold over a million units of this toy. The Little Professor was considered the first education electronic toy. Of course, back in the early days of calculators, you had the Bomar Brain. Sinclair put out some miniature calculators as well. But a lot of people like me grew up on uh, Texas Instruments, whether it be a basic one here, like the TI-1200, or the one I had in high school, which was the mainstay, the TI-30, which uh, nowadays people go for the TI-83 and they have much bigger cases now and you've got the graphing displays and all kinds of LCD stuff. But back in the day, this was state of the art when you were a high school kid with a calculator. And uh, Texas Instruments has been putting out quality products for years and obviously the Little Professor is one of them. So here you've got the Little Professor. Yeah, this one's been through the wars a little bit here as you notice the uh, button for the number eight is broken off. But it, there's enough in here where it still works so you can still uh, use the device. Basically, these tell you which operation you want to do, whether it be addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. This is your go, basically go to your next problem. On the side here, this side your power switch. This side here is your level control, and you notice there you've got numbers here, one, two, three, and four. And this basically, you, you move the switch to dictate what level you want to go to in the game. And we'll stay at level one right now. So here we go. We're going to, first of all, first, the other cool thing too is you've got the wrist strap here, but the way it looks on the chassis here, the wrist strap kind of looks like a little tassel because you've got the mortar mortarboard here on the little professor. So let's power this thing up. And now you're going to say go, and it's going to give you an operation. And so the first one here, two plus four, and that'll be six. Five plus four, nine. Three plus five, that's eight. Told you eight worked. Five plus zero, that's five. Three plus zero, that's three. Two plus zero is two. Zero plus two is two. 5 plus 3, once again, we go to 8. Yep, there we go. And then 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 plus 1, 4. 10, see that blinking 10? That means you get all 10 questions right. So I mean, you basically have that. You've got four levels, you've got all four operations. You've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And it's a great way to, for kids to have some handheld fun and yet still drill themselves in their math skills. It's a handy little unit and it was a big, big seller when it came out back in the late 70s and early 80s. And there it is, the Texas Instruments Little Professor. Coming up next, we teased it before, something that really changed the game as far as video production digital video production that is, that's today's senior system.
Welcome back to the Tech Throwback Computer Lab. And today we're going to take a look at one of the game changers when it came to computers doing digital video, basically. A lot of people are familiar with the Avid Media Composer, which was based on a Macintosh platform. But there's something that came out even before that. And this one was the game changer for a lot of people as far as digital video production. I present to you the new Tech Video Toaster. This is the box right here, and the video toaster was actually a card and software, but it went inside a Commodore Amiga. In this case, it's a Commodore Amiga 2000. So, I mean, we were talking about like classic computer systems. This is one of them right here. I mean, this is one of the first real devices that allowed you to do really fancy video effects and things like that without having to buy a whole studio full of gear. I mean, switchers at the time, if you're talking about like something, for instance, like this here, this JVC switcher. Now this JVC switcher here, you've got the little whammy bar here to do dissolves and things like that. You can cut back and forth between cameras direct, do a little rudimentary special effect like a chroma key or a basic luma key to do graphics. Something like this costs thousands of dollars. The big ones cost anywhere from like fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. And that was just the switcher. After that, you still needed equipment to generate the sync pulse to keep everything in time. You needed frame synchronizers, time-based correctors. You're talking tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars to set up a studio. This is a TV studio in a box, and I believe the uh, retail for this was about three grand with the computer. First thing we're going to do before we get into this is let's take a look at the Tech Throwback white paper for the New Tech Video Toaster. The Video Toaster was put out by New Tech Incorporated in September of 1990. The price of the components and the software alone, $23.99, that's if you just wanted the board and the software to put in an existing computer. A full turnkey Amiga system ran you about $5,000. The earliest versions, obviously, were compatible with the Commodore Amiga 2000 system. They later made later versions compatible with the Amiga 4000. Then once Commodore went under, they basically ported the whole thing over so it became Windows compatible. The video toaster software also included early versions of NewTek's very popular 3D modeling software, Lightwave. And here's an interesting trivia note. The first prototype of the video toaster was built by Dana Carvey's brother Brad. Well, isn't that special? So what we have here, I mentioned before, you've got the Commodore Amiga 2000 computer and uh, the display here, which by the way is a Commodore monitor too, so this is all vintage. And just a quick note, this is not only a vintage piece of gear, this is actually the WCTV video toaster that we've used here back, well, we used, well, I say we used it, I wasn't here when they used this, but they were using this back in like 95, 96, and we still have the unit here, and lo and behold, it still boots up and it actually works too, so we're going to run it through its paces right now. Let's take a close look at the screen, first of all, going up to the top here, you've got your different effects, different uh, swoop effects, like you can uh, do animations going in one way or another and zoom in, zoom out, do some rolls in, rolls out, and then you've got your um, options for going, this is your character generator, this is actually your 3D generator. This actually contains what was the precursor to one of uh, New Tech's most popular programs, which is Lightwave. Uh, then you've also got uh, Video Toaster Paint, too. You can actually draw your own graphics and do things. And then you've got your three, uh, three rows of buttons here like you would on a normal switcher. You've got, first of all, your preview, which basically if you want to take a look at something before you put it to air or set it up so you dissolve from one or the other, it goes in preview. Program, which is right here, this is actually what's going out live at the time. And then overlay, that's if you want to put graphics over, if you want to do like a, a lower third or some type of superimposed graphic, you do it here. Now this here, this is a representation of the, uh, the whammy bar, the effects bar that goes up and down, and then you've got your take, your auto, and then your controls here too. So now that we've shown you the screen and some of the functions it does, what we're going to do is uh, show you basically on the program here, we'll give you some examples of what this thing can actually do. And we'll start out with just a quick little thing here, starting off with in preview. This is the, uh, the camera setup here. So first of all, as we look here at this preview monitor, you've got me waving here. Hi, hello. Yeah, I'm in there. You can kind of see it. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually just do a straight cut. I'll just do a take. And so now I show up on the program monitor. See? Hey! Look at that guy. Look at that clown. Okay, now we go back here, and now we'll start to demo some of the uh, different fun effects you can do. This one here that looks kind of like the little swoopy thing here, what you do is you actually click auto. And actually, let's do this on uh, medium speed. Okay, here we go. Whee! So we'll go to, ooh, this one looks like a tennis ball. In fact, it's called ping pong, so let's try that. Whee! There we go. And then we have, oh, actually, actually this one's it's called swap on. This one's a split effect, so you see right here. There you go. So, I mean, you have all that stuff to play with. Uh, let's see. This one looks pretty interesting, too. Boing, oing, 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 oing. There we go. So, I mean, the, these are some fun effects you can do. I mean, once upon a time, I mean, when I was in high school, we had a switcher, but it was basically you did cuts and dissolves, and that was it. So, you either did just a straight cut, which looked like this. 
back and forth, back and forth, or you did a dissolve, which is basically a slow fade between sources. But with this here, you could do all kinds of stuff. You could do 3D motion, like this flip here, which we'll show you there. You actually get multiple pages of all types of different effects here. Here's where the wipes come in. You can just do standard wipes going back and forth. And actually, when I was mentioning the switcher we had in my high school studio, you could do wipes too, as, as well as straight cuts and also dissolves. Then you have just standard digital effects. And once again, now, let me give you the difference between a wipe and a digital video. I'm gonna do a wipe back to me on this here. And you see how it basically just gave you a, a part of the screen? Well, that's a wipe. Now, this is a digital effect where it actually takes the video and compacts it and then expands it or compacts it, does whatever. So the digital video effects, you basically are allowed to move the digital information, basically manipulate it, squeeze it, twist it, pivot it, and then move it wherever you want. But we'll go to uh, some of the other effects too. Uh, let's see, ooh, what's this one here? Squeeze B. There we go, ooh, squeeze B. B must mean border, because that's squeeze with a border. And uh, full disclosure, really this is one of my first times playing with this thing, so we're kind of learning it together. Whoa, there we go. Okay, so that's a replace with black and then come back in. There we go. So those are some of the effects you can do back and forth between uh, some of the units. Now one of the other features that this has, in addition to just the standard switcher function, you also have here CG, which is a character generator, in which you can basically just start to um, put a page together. And let's see, it says choose from page type, and you have some options here. This is a static page, this is a moving page, and then that's a roll, rolling, and then that's a crawl. So we'll just go with a standard one for now. And what we will do is, Caps lock there. Okay, so we'll go to that and now let's see, F6. Actually F5. Actually, I'm sorry, F2. Uh, let's see, so this allows us to change our font. There we go. And you can basically loop through all the different things here. So we'll just go with that for now. Then we'll go F9, which basically, if you notice now, the page is up on our preview screen and it's ready to use. So we're gonna go back now to the main thing here. And you look, and there you go. There's the graphic we just created stuck around the page. Of course, the letters are running off the edge, but once again, I'm just doing this for a simple illustration here. And then you can just uh, take that out, and boom, just cut it right over. So there you go. With a lot of computer systems nowadays, they do have some that have all these features. We're talking like things like uh, vMix is one that I've used in the past where you've got all the different digital effects and standard effects and transition capabilities, but you also have the character generator and a few other things built in. But I mean, this is back, I mean, we're talking, this came out like in the mid 90s. And so, I mean, it doesn't, they don't have nearly the technology for computers that we have today. But even so, some of the things you could do with this, it's truly amazing. So what we'll do now is, uh, once again, we'll go and uh, open up another CG page, and actually one of the things we found, I mentioned that this was the old WCTV toaster, and believe it or not, what we did was we found some stuff. We found some pages that are loaded in this thing. And you see it rendering now. A couple of the guys that work at the station here, Don and Ron, have their uh, little concern called Tapwin North Productions. And lo and behold, ta-da! So not only does this thing still work, it still has graphics in here from like 20 years ago. So it's a pretty amazing system. It is the Video Toaster once again. It was made by NewTek, and NewTek actually is still out. They still do programs like Lightwave. They also have a thing called 3D Toolbox. And one of the most popular products now is a TriCast, which is Basically an extension of the video toaster, it is a switcher and a computer. They actually have uh, control panels for them now. You have like these either small panels or large panels with buttons and fader bars everywhere, which is pretty cool. But this is where it all started. And this is what changed the game for a lot of digital video producers. 
especially for amateurs, people who couldn't afford hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in a television studio. Public access facilities, the, this thing was huge at, including obviously the one we're shooting at here, WCTV. And it really is, even to this day, it holds up. It's still a pretty terrific piece of video equipment. An old school tool that I, is really cool. This is the New Tech Video Toaster, and this one here is uh, version 2.0. What I have before me here, something that I spent a whole bunch of my childhood doing, and that's handheld games from Mattel Electronics. Mattel Electronics did so many different types of handheld games over the years. Most of them were sports related, but they did have other ones. Uh, they had a Battlestar Galactic Italian game. They had a couple of others. They had a flight game, Starhawk, which is one of the games I have here. And what we're going to do is take a look at the, some of these games and uh, some of the fun you could have back in the day. Once again, you know, these are all LED, just little segment displays. It, it doesn't have any type of resolution like any of the Game Boys or later handheld games. This was really basic stuff, but back when I was growing up, this was still pretty cool stuff. But before we take a look at these games, let's check out the Tech Throwback White Paper. Well, indeed, what we have here is the handheld games from Mattel Electronics. Mattel at that time, based in El Segundo, California, released their first games in 1977. The releases continued right through the early 80s, and then they started re-releasing the classics from 2000 to 2003. At the time, the prices of the games ranged from $25 to $35, and the most popular of the models were the sports games. Sports games from the original era included baseball, basketball, Basketball, there was later a basketball too. Bowling, football, later there was a football too as well. Also hockey and soccer, there was later a soccer too as well. So a lot of these games did have the basic version. Then they came along later with an upgraded version that actually gave you more features and more capabilities. The display was just a simple segmented light emitting diode display, just a simple LED. Original games ran on a 9 volt battery. If you have one of the re releases, they actually use double A's in place of the 9 volt battery. And when they did the re release of the basketball game, they actually included the capability for three-point shots. And these are uh, basically, this is my collection. Now, the thing is, most of these, this is tech throwback, we're doing retro tech, but most of these, I must confess, full disclosure here, these are the reissues. They're not the originals. Hockey, I've got the original because there was no reissue of the hockey, but if you go to toy stores, even now, you can find the, these reissue editions of the classic football, classic football two, also classic baseball, classic basketball. I think the soccer one might be out there too. Um, but once again, one way to tell real quick, and some people shop for these on eBay, a quick way to tell whether or not you've got one of the reissues or one of the originals, actually there are a few ways to do it. First of all, let's just take a look at uh, these two games here. You've got uh, classic hockey and classic basketball. Now you notice with classic hockey, you've got the classic Mattel Electronics logo and that kind of futuristic computer lettering, and then it says hockey. On the other hand, on the other one here, it says you've got the computer thing, but it says classic baseball, uh, classic basketball, and then it says Mattel in kind of like that CNN font. If you see Mattel in the CNN font, it's a reissue. It's not the original Mattel Electronics game. The original Mattel Electronics games are these two, this one right here. Once again, this is, this is the uh, hockey. But they do, once again, you can find these on eBay. A couple of other differences between the reissues. The reissues actually take AA batteries. They don't take the 9 volts like the original ones did. And the displays, I think, are dimmer. You know, the, the ones in the classic games showed up better and uh, were easier to see. So I've got five games here. And the games I have, I've got classic football. Classic Football 2, which is a refinement of Classic Football. We'll go over the differences between that in just a bit. Classic Baseball. Then we have the Hockey. And then Classic Basketball. And I mentioned Starhawk 2, which is a space flight game, which we'll get into in a little bit. But really quick, let's go over the uh, differences here between Classic Football and Classic Football 2. Now, with Classic Football 1, you just have the one basically um, east-west running option. You see here, you've got the up and down buttons for running, but then you have here, depending on which side of the field you're on, you can only run in one direction. They refined that in Classic Football 2. You could either run backwards or forwards. Also, you could pass here. Classic Football 1, you didn't have the option to pass. So they uh, did a few things there, and they have other refinements too. There was actually, I think, a Classic Basketball 2 as well, where they actually had a three-point line as well that they had thrown in there as well. But uh, first thing we're going to do there, uh, before we do any of this, let's go to the original Classic game that I have here, which is Hockey. So in the Classic Hockey, it all starts out with the power switch here. You see it's, the labeling here says 1, off, 2. That means basically the center position is off, left side is skill level 1, right side is skill level 2. So let's turn to skill level 1 for now. And you see right there, you've got the screen going on. So you start out and what you basically do is you start moving back and forth, see there, go back and forth. Okay, now, your goal, basically your, whoops, 
I lost the puck and it went away, which means you heard the whistle blow. And now the home player has it. So now we go back and forth here. See if I can go up behind the net. Or as Jack Edwards calls it, setting up in Gretzky's office. There we go. Nope. Whoop, nope, lost the puck, couldn't get it back. And so we go back to this side again, and we'll start again. There we go, goal. Basically what you want to do is you want to get a clear line at the goal, and you've got the four direction buttons, but then you have an orange button on either side here. You can see down here, you with the orange button with a little stick here. So this is shoot, and these are basically to move your guy around. So once again, you start up here, wait for your defense, actually you can take a shot here. Nope, it's blocked. And I lost the puck, which means now, well, well, this can be used by two players, but normally what happens is people just wind up playing themselves here, so. So once again, we go up. Oh, lost the, and actually, you just heard that double whistle. If you bump into a guy, it'll give you a warning. If you bump into one of the defenders twice, that means that basically you have a penalty, and now the defense is on the, basically you're shorthanded now. Whoop. Going up the top again. Whoops. And going, whoop. There we go. And now bring down and goal. So that's a look at classic hockey. Still one of my favorite games of the uh, all time from the uh, Mattel Electronic Staple. And basically, it plays through three periods. You've got three whole periods to play through. And uh, you, you basically, it's like 20, well, it's not 20 minutes because that would be forever. It's 20 simulated minutes. So I think it winds up being like five minutes a period or something like that. So if you want to play the whole thing, it'll, it'll take a little bit. And by the way, also, there's no overtime. These things can end in a tie. Uh, let's take a look at one of the others now. Uh, we mentioned classic football, so let's go there first. So you've got your three um, selections here. Once again, center is off. And then you've got pro one and pro two. So we'll go to pro one. And so you've got it there. See what I mean about the display? The displays on the reissues just aren't as bright as the original ones. But anyway, my guys right here, first thing you do is check your status. And it tells you up top what your uh, status is as far as down and distance and all that stuff. There you go. And so now, basically you can try and run. Check your status again between plays. I lost a yard there. Stay down there, wait, see if they can clear some room. There we go. Now you see what happened there. Now normally in football, obviously you run from one end of the field to the other, but this being such a small screen, what happens is when you get all the way over here, you just go back again. So it's like you're basically scrolling through, but you're facing the same defenders all the time. It's not like you can just break away and run for a touchdown. So that was Classic Football 1. Now Classic Football 2, we're not going to go through any, any gameplay on this because the gameplay is pretty similar to the other one. But the main difference is here you still have your score and your status buttons and your kick buttons. Now on the Classic Football 1, which we have here, you have ST, which is status, SC, which is score, and then K, which is kick. And then from there you've got your power switch, and then you get to run up and down. And then this here, you only run in one direction, whichever direction you happen to be facing at the time. So if you're coming this way up the field, you can only run this way. If you're going this way, you can only run this way. This one here, though, you may notice here, you've got um, both the buttons here to run back and forth. So these are all your running directional buttons. And you've also got a button for a pass, too. You can actually set up a pass in here as well. Then you've got your kick button and your score and your status, just like the other ones. Now, let's go back to uh, one of the other Mattel handheld games here. And this one is classic baseball. Once again, this is one of the reissues. And you've got your score right here. You basically, you start with a pitch. Whoops. And what just happened there is the pitch came down, I swung, and you saw that it was blinking right there. That means I flied out to the center fielder, so there's one out now. So we'll do it again, we'll hit the, uh, whoops, missed that one. So we'll start again, do another pitch. And I missed that one again, and one more time. And I, fly, I basically lined out to the third baseman. So next batter up. And that's a double. Now when you hear the two beeps, it means that the ball is in a position where if you run good enough, you should have a double. But sometimes they give you random runner speed and sometimes, sometimes you've got Ricky Henderson, sometimes you've got David Ortiz. So sometimes it can beep three times, but you almost be thrown out making it to first base if your runner's slow enough. So you've got a runner on second here. Hear all that beeping? That my friends is what they call a home run. Yeah. Okay, now you look at the score, it's two runs there. But anyway, you get the general idea. So that's, that's classic baseball. We've already done uh, classic hockey. Classic basketball is basically almost the same as classic hockey, so we won't really go there. But the other one we will look at really quick here is a game called Starhawk. Now this is a, sp a space flight game. 
It, it's, it's kind of a weird one, actually, as far as the screen interface, because it's not one of those where you actually have this animated thing going on. You basically have, well, let's turn it on and, and you'll see for yourself. And you see there, it's, 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 once again, it's really, really kind of, kind of fady here. So first thing you want to do, you want to launch, so you hit fire. Coming down the runway. And now you're airborne. And now you're climbing. Oh, enemy right there. There we go. <laughs> so you have it, and basically, whoops. And someone got me. So once again, we'll do a little bit of a takeoff here. We'll go back close on the screen again. And once again, let's climb a little bit. 6,000 feet now. You see the enemy planes coming in there. There we go, got one. And going down now. Going down to pursue that guy. Come on. There we go. Got another one. And now I'm just going to land. And there you go, Starhawk, a really rudimentary and interesting space game done by the folks at Mattel Electronics. And that's the way we used to compute and play back in the day. Thank you for joining us in Tech Throwback. I'm Bill Robert. I'll be back next time with some more things that are cool and old school. Till then, have a great day and thanks for watching.